the Spirit of Fire, once a colony ship, refitted as a support ship for the UNSC, and the ship at the heart of Halo Wars. Commissioned in 2473, the Spirit of Fire was a Phoenix-class colony ship, first helmed by Captain Coleman. Like other ships in her class, the Spirit of Fire was equipped with atmospheric generators, hydroponic equipment, and prefabricated schools. In every sense, the Spirit was prepared for colony establishment and support. While some Phoenix-class vessels had been known to be decommissioned by colonists to support the newly established colony, the Spirit of Fire would serve for over 50 years under the Colonial Administration Authority. She was helmed by Captain Coleman from 2473 to 2484, Captain Rakoff from 2484 to 2491, Captain Donald from 2491 to 2499, Captain Johnson from 2499 to 2505, and Captain Rogan from 2507 to 2513. The final civilian captain was Captain Alexander from 2513 to her decommissioning on July 20th, 2520, just after a visit to the colony of Verant. In that year, the UNSC requisitioned the ship, and it spent the next several years undergoing refit, being outfitted with a mech cannon and several other upgrades to make the Spirit of Fire into a proper warship. Storage bays once meant for machine parts now carried military vehicles and firebase supplies. In 2525, the newly christened UNSC Spirit of Fire was rolled out, now captained by James Gregory Cutter. Cutter arrived on the Spirit of Fire on August 8, 2525, having been handpicked by Admiral Cole to captain the ship. As a warship, the Spirit of Fire would serve with Battle Group D in 3rd Fleet, providing ground forces with supplies, reinforcements, vehicle support, air support, orbital max strikes, and more. Cutter himself was known to care for those who served under him more so than the average officer, and was a dedicated family man. In 2528, he turned down a transfer to the UNSC Prophecy, a Marathon-class cruiser. His current posting on Spirit of Fire kept him near Reach, where his wife and daughter lived and rarely deployed on long away missions. Unfortunately, decisions like this meant he'd have difficulty climbing the military ladder. Also by 2528, Cutter's executive officer was future Admiral Terence Hood. By 2530, Hood had been given command of the Halcyon-class cruiser Roman Blue. On January 7, 2530, the smart AI Serena was created and soon replaced the former AI on Spirit of Fire. Later that year, after his second arrest, Sergeant John Forge was also transferred to the Spirit. Forge had engaged in a fight with a lieutenant on August 17th, after the drunk officer had gotten rough with John's relative, Jillian Forge, in the presence of his daughter, Lucy. The next morning, he was visited by Admiral Cole himself and transferred to the Spirit to lead squads into hostile environments. On January 3rd, 2531, the Spirit was deployed near Harvest to help out the UNSC Prophecy after the Marathon-class cruiser had engaged Covenant forces and had her reactor breached. Three days later, the Spirit arrived. Sergeant Forge led forces aboard to rescue survivors and erase the nav data. The mission was ultimately a success, but the survivors had suffered extensive radiation poisoning and could not be saved. In the same year, Ellen Anders, a professor of xenobiology, was recruited by Oni Section 3 after they had taken pictures of the Covenant's activity on Harvest and intercepted transmissions referring to it as a treasure world. Her interest piqued, Anders was more than willing to help out. Around February 4th, Anders arrived on the Spirit. She presented her analysis to Cutter, noting the Covenant's interest in the northern region. Cutter deployed Forge to scout the region. After Marines fought off local Covenant forces, Professor Anders was sent in to investigate and found that the site contained a star map pointed to the colony of Arcadia. Cutter, though concerned about what else the Covenant might be doing on Harvest, informed Admiral Cole of what Anders had found and was allowed to redeploy. On February 9th, the Spirit arrived at Arcadia. The Covenant forces they'd followed had taken out or crippled the local ships and was engaged in service activity near the capital of Perth. Spirit forces were deployed to the surface to help evacuate the city before refocusing on the Covenant's actual target, a series of alien ruins outside Perth. The Spartans of Red Team, having been present during the Battle of Perth, now assisted the Spirit. Using plasma rhinos provided by the UNSC Pillar of Autumn, they were able to take down a domed energy shield protecting the Covenant's activities within the ruins. Local Covenant forces were defeated soon after. With the immediate threat gone, Anders, escorted by Sergeant Forge, moved into the former Covenant Occupation Zone to investigate what they had been up to. Unfortunately, they were ambushed by a large Sangheili, the Arbiter, and Anders was kidnapped. Given the risk her capture presented, Cutter chased after the ship that had taken her. The Spirit would deploy a log buoy before departing, but it was never recovered by UNSC forces. On February 23rd, the Spirit arrived over an unknown planet in an unknown system and immediately re-engaged the Covenant. 
However, they soon found themselves engaged by a third faction, an alien parasite known as the Flood. Worse, it was discovered that the planet was actually a micro Dyson sphere, what the Forerunners called a shield world, and contained a massive fleet of ships, enough to wipe out humanity. After rescuing Professor Anders, she and Cutter developed a plan to destroy the shield world and the fleet contained within. Using the spirit Shaw Fujikawa slipspace drive, they caused the shield world's mini sun to go supernova, destroying anything and everything within. The plan was ultimately a success, but required the sacrifice of Sergeant Forge to carry it out. And now, with no slipspace drive, the Spirit of Fire had no way home, forced to use her standard engines to try and find their way. The entire crew entered cryosleep, hoping to one day find themselves in UNSC space. On February 10th, 2534, the ship was declared lost with all hands by the UNSC, having previously only been declared missing. The reason for this change was never publicly revealed. A formal memorial service was held for those lost, but many of the crew's family refused to attend, instead holding out hope that their loved ones were still out there. In January of 2537, during a routine inspection of the ship's systems, a flood infection form that had stowed away aboard the ship found a victim, and a small flood outbreak ensued. This despite thorough measures by Chief Medical Officer O'Neill after the ship's encounter with the flood years prior. Professor Anders and Spartan Jerome of Red Team were both awoken to help deal with the threat. After the flood was eliminated, Jerome and Anders returned to cryosleep. Serena made a series of recordings based on probable encounters, an after-action report for Cutter, and initiated final dispensation. Now, in early 2559, the Spirit of Fire finds itself over a mysterious installation known as the Ark and engaged by former Covenant forces known as the Banished. Who are the Banished? How did they get to the Ark? And what is the state of the galaxy after almost 30 years? Only time will reveal the answer to these questions and more. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.